Greetings in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Happy New Month. I welcome you all to this new month. It's my prayer that God Almighty will release His blessings upon our lives and lead us through this month safely in Jesus' name. Today we're talking about Jesus will return suddenly. Jesus will return suddenly. Let us pray. Lord, help us to watch. Help us to be watchful. Help us to take heed to everything you said in your word. For the time has come that end time prophecies are being fulfilled before the very eyes of men. But unfortunately, deception is so deep it is so high that a lot of people are still being deceived. Lord, we ask that your word will ignite your fire inside of us. Lord, wake us up from every sleep. May your word break every stony heart and cause a divine awakening in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's look at the test, First Thessalonians chapter 5, 1 to 4. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety. Then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. When a woman gets pregnant, she puts two things into consideration. Growing the baby, growing the pregnancy successfully, then the woman could have a lot of health challenges. She could lose appetite for food. A lot of chemical and hormonal changes take place in the body. That is the first thing she does, growing the baby and ensure safety that she is the right food, does the right exercise, and makes sure the baby is healthy. The second thing is to make sure that she delivers the baby. There is a saying that the world is pregnant. Yes, the world is pregnant. Nobody knows the kind of child it is going to give birth to. A pregnant woman has one thing she is very sure of. She is very sure that one day she is going to deliver a baby. In this passage, there is a reference as an example to a pregnant woman that when they shall say safety, peace, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travel upon a woman with child. We have seen people who are pregnant, women heavily pregnant. Some will be so strong, they, would, they may not even have any sign of delivery. Some will go to the farm, some to the market, some to the church. All of a sudden, they discover that birth pangs grip them. And in no time, they push the baby out. The baby wants to come down now. That is why every woman that is pregnant is very conscious of their delivery. When they see signs, they call their doctors. They call their midwives. They visit the hospital. They even do scan. Because of modern technology, they have at least a targeted period of time that 
she is likely to deliver by Sususo time. And they are careful. Nobody that is pregnant who knows their expected delivery date will be embarking, embarking on the journey on the day of their, within the period of their EDD. They don't. But they are careful because they know best pangs don't pre-inform you. So also, the return of the Lord, it is going to come suddenly. It is going to be a time that the Lord will come to put an end to the sufferings of the saints that are ready, and they will be caught up to be with the Lord. Today, I want to talk generally about the rapture and the second coming of Jesus Christ. The rapture is a cashing away of the saints before the seven years of tribulation. And then the second coming of Jesus Christ is immediately after the great tribulation. Immediately after the great tribulation of those days, he will appear with the raptured saints. We need to get ourselves ready. He will come and establish the 1,000 reign on earth. He will come with the raptured saints and the saints of old, and they will occupy this earth, and he will reign from Jerusalem for 1,000 years before Satan will be loose be set loose again. I was talking to someone yesterday and I said, God gives people different opportunities. Yes, that was on Friday. God gives people different opportunities so that they can change, so that they can repent. And I said, this is something that we must not joke with. If you have pains in this world, you can go to sleep. And sleep and forget about your problems, at least momentarily. A lot of people, some people resort to drinking alcohol. Some feed themselves with pleasure. Some, they take pleasure in watching comedy so that they can laugh. And laugh off their troubles, their pains. Even though it doesn't solve the problem, at least they have some level of relief. Some resort to taking drugs, hard drugs, because they want to forget about their problems momentarily. But those who miss the rapture are going to face serious pains. It is going to be a time that humanity will be subjected to, to, to torture, unbearable torture especially those who refuse to take the mark of the beast. The question is, how ready are you? Who is wise in this generation and is watching? Who amongst us is wise enough to follow the commands of the Lord and not get carried away? Let's look at the text again. It says, for when they shall say peace, and safety, peace and safety. A beggar on the street cannot tell you peace and safety. Your worker, your cook cannot tell you peace and safety. The bus driver, the pilot cannot tell you peace and safety. The market woman, the administrative officer in your workplace cannot tell you peace and safety because it will look irrelevant to you. But who is in the position to tell you peace and safety and it will be relevant to you? These people are religious leaders, your pastors. They will tell you peace and safety. Then your political leaders, then your traditional leaders, they will tell you peace and safety. Everything is okay. Don't worry. 
we are going to fix the problem. Don't worry. And then suddenly, destruction will come upon those whose hearts are hardened against the instructions and the commands of the Lord. How many of us are awake this moment? How many of us are awake to the point of discerning the deception that is on ground? If you look at most of our churches today, they have become solution centers. Solution centers, places you go to and your problems are solved. Not a place you go to to hear the word of God and be closer to your maker. Many of our churches today have become homes of witch doctors, where people go and they get solutions to their problems. A witch doctor will never ask you, how are you living your life? It is a contract. You go, you solve your problems, and you pay the price. You give them the fee. And they let you to and they let you go. That is what a lot of many of our churches today have become. They don't care about the sheep, they don't care about the master, they don't care about the owner of the sheep anymore. Thank God for the few people that still preach the truth and take care of the souls of men. They don't just care about the physical prosperity of their members. But first of all, they care about the spiritual prosperity, the prosperity of the souls of the sheep the Lord has put into their care. How many of us are watchful this moment? Are you watchful or you are among those who have been carried away? It is so sad that a lot of people no longer think about heaven. They don't care about heaven. When you tell them about heaven, they tell you, well, we have to live well first. Many preachers say, why, why are you in a hurry? Even me, a lot of people have talked to me. A lot of people have mocked me. I mean, ministers of God that don't mind this one. All he thinks about is heaven. So what else do I supposed to think about? The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and every other thing shall be added unto us. So what do I supposed to think about, if not heaven? Have you been deceived? Are you among those who have been deceived? There is a lot of deception that is ongoing right now. A lot of people have been deceived. A lot of people have been led astray. They no longer believe the truth. Are you among them? Or are you among the few that are watching? The Lord Jesus Christ will return suddenly when nobody expects. Even among Christians, a lot of people have become cold, just like the ten virgins. The bridegroom delayed his coming, and all of them, ten of them, fell asleep. Because he delayed his coming. I know sometimes there are ups and downs, ups and downs in a race. There are ups and downs. But in all your ups and down movement, have enough oil in your lamp. Is your lamp still burning or you have given up? This is not a time to give up. In hell, people don't rest. When people have physical problems, they may try one or two things to forget about their problems. But if they make it into hell, they don't rest. There is no break. If at all, nothing is motivating us. The beauty of heaven should motivate us. If the beauty of heaven, the reward in heaven cannot motivate you, Think about the other side, how horrible it looks like. Think about what Jesus Christ described, that there, should, there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth, and that the fire does not quench, and the worms, they don't die. The worms that punish people in hell, they don't die, they live forever. 
We are not talking about three days. We're not talking about 10 days. We're not talking about one year. We're not talking about 100 years. We are not talking about a million years. We are talking about eternity. Eternity. I mean, forever and ever. There is no rest. There is no more hope. If nothing, if nothing at all, if nothing at all encourages you, if you have nothing in you that encourages you, if the joy of heaven, the relief we have in heaven is not enough to encourage you, please let hell, escaping the fire of hell, motivate you to run away from sin and continue to run hard after Jesus Christ even when you are weak. This world, there are so many things that are capable of making us to look back and give up on our faith in God. So also, we have received the truth that is able to enable us to energize us with the grace of God so that we can continue and not give up. One of the reasons I don't misbehave in my ministry, one of the reasons I don't monetize prophetic, the prophetic gifts the Lord has given to me, I don't monetize my calling, I've never asked anybody to sow seed into my life any day. I've never done that. I have not, and I'm not going to do it. One of the reasons is because I used to hate the way first prophets and pastors behave. It was a very big pain in my heart that these people are milking the body of Christ and are bringing shame to the name of Jesus Christ. I used to criticize them. Now I am in the same ministry. So what I used to say in criticizing them has become a great motivation to me. That is one of the things that motivate me to today. Because these are things I know that are purely wrong. These things are wrong. There is no justification for these things. No justification. And I told myself, I am going to train myself to devalue money. I know a lot of people insult me that I don't know what to do with money. But over the years, by the grace of God upon my life, I have train myself. So whenever I remember, even if I'm passing through hardship, whenever I remember where I'm coming from, the level of faithfulness I have resolved to practice before I even start ministry, I get motivated. What is motivating you? You should have something that is motivating you. Do you have anything you can think about and say, no, I don't want to give up? You should have something in mind. Think about heaven. Think about hell. The day of death is more important than the day of birth. Your day, your birthday, is not as important as your death day. It is not about where we are coming from, it's about where we are going. I know there are lots of people who we quickly write and wish us rest in peace when we die, but that is of no significance. If you don't make peace with the Lord right now, even if Jesus does not come to meet you, if 
you go to him through death. Even if the whole world writes on you and wish you post your pictures on social media and write RIP, I tell you, you will not rest in peace. You can only rest in peace right now by reconciling with God, by allowing the peace that passes all understanding to rule your heart. And then when you leave this world, that peace launches you into the arms of the Prince of Peace. There's a lot of deception today. Before people used to confess their sins. And you see sincerity when people want to die. They will say, oh God, please forgive me. I've done this, I've done that. They will confess because they are seeking for mercy. Today, people's hearts have been so hardened. By who? By the preachers of prosperity and fake prophets who tell you peace and safety. When they know that verily, verily, truly, this person is heading for destruction in hell. But they still tell you peace and safety. Even on your deathbed, they prophesy to you. They cajole you and make you suicide, alter your will, and make some donations on your deathbed. As a matter of fact, a lot of men of God today take advantage of sick people. They promise them healing, promise them heaven, promise them a lot of things. Take advantage of that. Instead of leading them to true repentance or reconciliation or prepare them for eternity, they don't. Oh, you shall not die. They pray all sorts of prayers. Prophesy to you. You will not die. This death is canceled. This year, next year, you will live up to 100 they say all sort of things. But many of these people still die. I remember someone a few years ago. I told her, I said, God said, if you don't repent, you will soon die. She went to other men of God. They prophesied to her. They, she sowed seed. She gave to the church because she wanted to leave. But she did not leave. She died. It's three years now. She's dead. She is dead. People don't want to hear the truth. They want someone to tell them peace, safety. If you want to be safe, Prepare for the return of Jesus Christ. Prepare for him to come in the rapture to take you. Or if you're listening this, to this message after the rapture has taken place, please prepare yourself. Immediately after the great tribulation of those days, he will come again. Prepare yourself. Nobody knows the time. Nobody knows the hour of his return. Before I round off this message, let me read Matthew chapter 24, 36 following. But of the day and hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah, where so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the meal, the one shall be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, 
for ye know not what hour the Lord doth come. The Lord Jesus Christ is coming very soon. He is coming very, very soon. He is close. If you look at the signs around the world, you will know that the rapture is close. It's so close. Prepare to meet your God. Prepare to meet your God. Let us pray. Lord, help us this day. We don't want to be among the five foolish virgins. They were virgins. They were pure, but they were not watchful. They ran out of all. Lord, help us. Help us, O oh Father, help us, Jesus. Help us to stand. Help us to stand to the end. Help us to save you. Help us, mighty God. Lord, I pray that you will bless as many who have heard these words. Cause the fire to burn in their bones, in their spirits, in their bodies, and in their minds. Cause a revival within. Cause unquenchable fire of revival to burn in us. Thank you, Jesus. I pray for those who have been supporting our ministry and our charity organization. Father, please help your people. Support them. Take away troubles from their lives. Release your blessings upon their lives. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please like, share, comment, and also recommend this ministry to other people. Thank you and God bless you. See you next time.